Hey, what's going on? Boulder 70.3 fans. Ryan here, Seth the Pace Triathlon.com, doing a quick little video on where should you stick your spectators. Uh, I think this is going to be an important key because at 73 Boulder, it's a little bit unique. I have the reservoir for the parking and everything. Once you're there, you're kind of locked in. Um, so I just want to go through a, key, a few key points uh, about the race, about the reservoir, and the best options for spectators while you're out there. I've done the race, done the half three times and the full once. So plenty of time out there at the reservoir, kind of a feeling it out and seeing what's going on. Um, I've not brought in, I've not brought my, my spectators or Sherpas or family anything like that. It's always been just me. Uh, but I'm able to kind of see what the layout is, and I think you get a pretty good perspective on where you should put people. So let's just start off by going to the courses. And if you look at the swim, obviously you're in the reservoir. If you look at the bike, start, the finish, T1 and T2 are at the reservoir. If you look at the run, T T2 and the run finish are right at the reservoir. So what I'm saying is it's going to be important. Everything happens at the reservoir. Once you get parked there, you're going to be parking like over here someplace. Once you get parked, there's there's going to be little reason. I mean, you can go out and try to catch people on the run course. But here's, I want you to read this, the race theory info for parking. They're very strict on their parking. So they're given one pass per athlete. And you jam as many people as you can in that car, but once it gets there, they don't want you coming and going until you're done with your race. Um, so no going out and finding your athlete in the, on the bike course and then driving and parking back in. Once you leave, they're not going to let you back in until the race is over. Um, so race day Saturday, uh, they got shuttles, um, but then a parking will be located at the Boulder Reservoir starting at 4 a.m. And I'm trying to find out. So this is the only way to enter and exit the reservoir between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. You will have to wear a mask on the bus if you do the shuttles. Uh, I believe at 2 p.m. they start letting people leave the reservoir um, just because they the, the entrance and exit is right over here. So you are not necessarily going to be impacted by the bike course. So you can come and go as you please. But <clears throat> once they get you parked, you probably don't want to be mess messing with driving around and trying to get any place out. So your spectators are coming to the reservoir with you and i would definitely plan on them coming with you at race start because if you leave with your car and your parking pass they're going to have to take a shuttle which is fine but you're just going to have to wear a mask they're going to have to do different things it's going to take a little bit longer um so i would just at all possible plan on everybody getting to the reservoir at once with your athlete and sherpas and all that get set up sherpas and family or whatever they can sleep in the car while you're out there getting ready and they can wake up and, and you know do everything they need to but I think it's important to know that there's no parking. There's no parking on the roads to the reservoir. Parking the reservoir, once they got you in there, they don't want you leaving. They want you coming and going. So I would definitely recommend for your Sherpas, plan on staying at the reservoir. So that's going to be the key. So you can see the swim start. You can see the swim exit. You see T1. And then you can see them riding. So you, you actually will probably have a little bit of time. If you want, if I can zoom in here on the course. So you might have a little bit of time. You can walk out and see the road here. So this is where uh, transition is. And they come out here and they do a little loop. And then they come out and they hit the main area. So they do this little loop to pick up to get to 56 miles for the bike ride. But So you can come out here. You can see your people loop out and come back in. You can walk out to the main road here and, and watch your athletes uh, ride up and down the road. They're going to come back. They have to go out and then come back and then go out and then come back. So it's, it's a two loop on that, this little part, even though it says it's one loop, but when they come back in, they have to come back and then catch this. And then they got to do two loops of that little section. So if you're right here, you'll catch your athlete. You probably need the time, you know, get the Ironman tracker to find out where they are on the course, because it looks like from what I can tell on this, they run right out, come out here, do you turn right out, right back. And then they take a turn, and then they, so they hit the main course, and they come back, and they catch this road again. And then they come back for a second loop to the finish only. So for the finish, it used to be, when I last time I did it, we did this loop twice. Uh, so this little section here, uh, we actually did it twice. But this year, it looks like you only come out and catch this U-turn once. So once you come back out, so if you're, if you're a fast Sherpa, you can watch them come out of, of T1, and then once they hit this U-turn, maybe you can get out here by the time they fly by. 
and then they come by and if you go over to this and this is it's a little bit deceiving this is a little bit of a hike um so just make sure that when you're out there you know maybe you have your own bike bring a, a like a mountain bike or whatever ride there's some trails and stuff out there off the road so you can ride around um maybe you can catch them here in that first loop but once you get back to uh catch them you can probably catch them on the second loop but once they get past you they're going to be on the run course so i'd kind of highly recommend just hanging out by the reservoir um have everybody there catch you in t1 coming out they can catch you in the loop and wave at you going out and you can come out here and do your ride and then maybe they can come and, and you know watch the the racers and everything here for a little bit and then watch you on the ironman tracking app and then come back in and then hang out the reservoir because when you hit the run you're going to come out of transition and you're going to out here and run so your sherpers are going to have plenty of time to come out here and catch you with this turnaround right after the dam so you come out here it's a two loop course you come out and run and when you come out you do a little loopy and you come back out so your spectators can hang out here they can see you in when you leave t2 cheer you on while you're changing your clothes and get out there and once you run past they can come hang out here and then you come run past there they can yell at you you can hang out here and yell at them coming down the dam and then going down the dam so you can see them three times on the run you can see them uh, like three times on the bike because they have to come out and do this little log and pop loop um and you can see them at the finish line so this is i, th I think you know people kind of complain a little bit that they're kind of trapped at the reservoir which hey man make make a make a day out of it bring bring food bring snacks bring picnic um you know bring a cooler uh just plan on being out, th out there all morning you know, even if it's sunny and warm, it's not like killer. There's trees there. There's places you can set up the picnic and check this out, which to my knowledge, they haven't really done this before. Race day activities for any spectators or athletes who choose to remain after their race. So there'll be a ton of activities pr provided between 1030 a.m. and 5 p.m. So that 1030, most athletes will not be done by 1030. I think the race starts at like 7, 630 or something like that. So unless your, your athlete does like super fast. So there's stand-up paddleboarding, free, and kayaking. So you can kayak over in the reservoir and watch your athlete on the course and wave at him and scream at him from a kayak. So that's kind of fun. Um, swimming in the roped-off area, in the swimming area. So there's like a little swimming area over here and a little boathouse. So if you're bringing kids, they can go out there and swim. Athlete food, spectator food, and a beer garden. These activities will be located on the swim beach, which is northwest of Expo. Please enjoy Boulder Reservoir's offerings race day. Can't wait to see you all Saturday. So I think that's super cool. <clears throat> they haven't really done that in the past. Uh, in the past, there's been like, uh, like double booked sometimes. Like another event was there one year, and it wasn't a part of our event, but they had food trucks and tents. I think some people used that. It was kind of weird. But this year, they they're 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 listening to what people want, and it makes I think this makes this race pretty pretty awesome because there is now activities, especially after athletes done the race, they're hanging out, they're, they're chit chatting with their friends. The kids can go swim in the reservoir. They can play with stuff. They can uh, go get food. They can do different things. They can, you can take them kayaking afterwards. Um, you could jump in the reservoir and kind of wash off, you know, if you're going to turn around and drive someplace. Um, so I think that's going to be, as far as spectator goes, this is going to be a pretty good option. Um, just to be at the reservoir, there's going to be food options. I would I recommend bringing your own stuff too. Bring a, bring a, a, a blanket and bring a, a cooler and, food and drinks and all that kind of stuff make a day out of it there's plenty of opportunity to see your athlete especially on the run course uh there's athlete there, there's plenty of opportunity to see him on the swim you see him in the start run or the finish watch him in transition watch him they bike out watch him when they go through the loll lollipop and then maybe catch him when they come in and then t2 and then when they hit the run and then catch him out here when they come out and go back in for the run there's plenty plenty of opportunities for your spectators to see what's going on and your sherpas and everybody else but there's also plenty of uh, opportunities for families you do picnics 10 30 a.m they'll still let you start swimming in the reservoir at 10 30 a.m if you got older kids you can get a kayak and they can do stand-up paddle boarding um, out in the reservoir which is pretty cool uh, i haven't i think this is the first time i've heard of them being able to do this like on race weekend so that's i think that's pretty cool um, a lot of races don't have these kind of opportunities so hopefully you guys take advantage of it so that's kind of recommendations of where I think the spectators should be. If you try to go out on the course, um, it's going to be difficult. And this right here is a gravel path for the most part. And you got some dirt roads and some paved roads. Um, you know, unless you've got some sort of rental house out here and there's a reason for you to be out there, it, it's really kind of no man's land. It's going to be very difficult for you to drive out of the reservoir and come over here and drive back or something. 
I would just plant yourself at the reservoir around the transition area and you'll see the bulk of action, especially since this is a half iron man, you know, and they're not be gone for inordinate amounts of time. Um, I would, I wouldn't worry about the bike course either. Like I said, if you've got family, you've got kids, you've got a big group, I would not worry about dragging them around out here. Now there might be opportunity. Um, like I said, I think I didn't read anywhere in there where you couldn't necessarily leave and come back. Uh, the vehicle was athlete pass hanging from the radar all day. No access about the pass. No exceptions is available. Registration. Parking located at the Reservoir. Spare for AM. Please follow parking crews. If you can do so, please carpool. No parking for minimum on 51st. Uh, they don't say anything about coming and going. Uh, but I bet they're going to frown upon that, especially when they got a bunch of people walking around and the race is going on. They're not going to want you driving your car around. Um, it, it does get a little bit crowded in there. I mean, they try to wedge your, wedge the cars all in this area. So they try to park you wherever they can. And there's a big grass field that they'll park a lot of people in. I just would not, I just wouldn't try to drive out and try to catch anybody on the bike course. Now, um, like I said, this, this road leading out the reservoir, they're not going to let people park, but maybe if you had a support vehicle out there, they can drive up and come get you and then drive out and then chase around people on the bike and then drive back and drop you off. They just can't park there. Once, once that event starts, they're not going to let cars without park, parking passes in. So don't plan on getting there after, I believe, uh, well, if you've got a parking pass, it doesn't say that you can't. Uh, and they're doing the shuttles from 5 to 6 p.m. And uh, there's the only way to enter exit the reservoir between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. So if you do have a parking pass and you get there after 7 a.m., they're not going to let you in the reservoir. You can probably drop somebody off if you wanted to. And then you have to hit the road. They're not going to let you park there. You're not going to let you park along the roads out there. They'll have you towed or fun stuff like that. So I would not do that. But ultimately, I think, like I said, I keep going back to it. If you plant yourself at the reservoir, there's there's trees, there's shade, there's bathrooms. Um, there's the swim area. And they're opening up at 1030 with all kinds of activities for people to do. And families and kids. All kinds of fun stuff. I think there's going to be plenty to do. And especially, you know, on a half Ironman, 56 miles, maybe three to four hours is the longest you'll see somebody out there. So I think during that time, there should be plenty of activities in here to keep you busy. Um, like I said, you know, bring bring a cooler, bring a blanket and make a picnic out of it. Usually it's going to be warm in August in Boulder, but it's not like sweltering humidity like we get here in the Midwest in Kansas City. Um, we're not sweating to death and stuff like that. So it shouldn't be super uncomfortable. You know, they'll, they'll have the vendors there. They'll have the tents there. Uh, I just bring a face mask just in case there's an opportunity. If you're riding the, the shuttles or something like that, you have a face mask. But I think mostly right now the expo, you don't, you're not required to wear a face mask in the expo and stuff. So you can go to the, the Ironman Village. You can go shopping. Whatever you want to do for three hours while your guy or your uh, athletes out there doing the bike course. Um, but I would, I, would, I would avoid going out and trying to find a, a hot spot to watch people on the bike course, especially the highways. Um, you get a shoulder and they cone off, they move the lanes over and there's really no place to park or anything. It's just kind of a mess. And these are kind of like backstreet roads. Um, this, this little area, this intersection, sometimes people will try to park here, but this highway is pretty, uh, busy and they try to open it up as soon as, you know, the bikers are done and off the course. So it can get busy and you might get trapped on there. You know, if you're parking along the shoulder or something like that, I just wouldn't. The whole course is not conducive to going out and parking and spectating on the bike course. Now, if you've got a house or a rental or someplace out here, then maybe, you know, if you're already settled to walk out to the highway and see what's going on. But for the most part, I'd recommend just sticking with the reservoir as far as the athletes or as far as the Sherpas and spectators. Um, you'll see the most action there, and I think it'll be a much more pleasant experience. And they set it up to just keep you there and keep you entertained. Um, they got food trucks, they got, you know, entertainment and you know, kayaking, stand up paddle boarding. They got to swim, they'll open up the swim beach for people. So plenty of opportunities um, with that, you know, I don't see any questions or anything like that, but, uh, if you thought of anything else, maybe you've done Boulder 7.3, maybe you spectated it before and you had like a super secret, Hey, this was the best way I found to spectate and see my athletes on the bike course or something. Put them in the comments. If you thought this was awesome, like the video, share it. Um, I'm going to post it on YouTube as well. So hopefully it helps everybody out. Uh, for Boulder 7.3 and kind of gives you a good idea as far as your Sherpas and spectators go, what the thing, what the best places to do and the best courses of actions. But I plan on being self-supported, but they are going to provide opportunities for, for food trucks and everything else out there and a little bit of entertainment too. So, and, and plus, you know, 
Uh, they're going to have professionals there, and it's kind of fun to just hang out and, and watch the, the finish line when the pros start rolling in, and then the athlete and the age groupers roll in. So they keep it pretty hopping, and it's pretty entertaining. So I think if you stick, stuck around the reservoir, you wouldn't be too disappointed, and you'll see your athlete a lot. So that's my tips. Hopefully everybody has a great race out there, and training has gone well, and we'll see you at the finish line with happy faces and smiles on your face, and we'll see you next time.